As 2023 comes to an end, here are some of the best and worst camera gear purchases that I've made this year. I buy a lot of camera gear. I love cameras and camera gear, and I love trying out new things. New camera gear tends to spark new creativity with me as it tends to get me out there to shoot new things with that new gear. But as I'm sure many of you guys can relate to, sometimes I buy gear with the best of intentions to get out there and to shoot something sweet with it, but it just sits on my desk collecting dust. One of the best examples of an awesome piece of camera gear that I bought this year is the Rokinen 85mm 1.4. I've already made a full video on this lens, which you can check out here or here, whichever side it is, I always forget. Anyway, I absolutely love this lens and it's quickly become one of my favorite lenses. Another item that I picked up this year that got me out there to shoot things in completely new ways that I never had before is the DJI Mini 3 drone. This is my first drone and I can't express enough just how fun it is to fly this thing. Not only does it take sweet videos, but actually getting out there and flying the drone is a pretty cool activity in and of itself. If you don't already have a drone, I highly recommend that you pick one up. And again, I made a video on the DJI Mini 3, which you can check out here. By far, the piece of gear that I bought this year that has sparked the most creativity has been the Canon TX film camera. I grew up in an era where people still were shooting film and developing film, but unfortunately, I didn't get into photography until much later in life. So aside from using disposable cameras and little point and shoot film cameras that my parents had, this has really been my first exposure to film photography. It's really cool to get out there and to be looking at photography through an entirely new lens, both metaphorically and quite literally. And it's really making me look at photography in new ways. I'm still very much in the beginning of my film photography journey, but it's something that I'm enjoying quite a lot and something that I plan to do a lot more in 2024. Next up are these, which are macro rings. I'll probably make an entire video specifically on these, but I'll summarize real quickly what they do. Essentially, they allow you to turn a normal non-macro lens into a lens with macro capabilities by moving the lens farther away from the sensor. They're super cheap in comparison to an actual macro lens, and although there are some limitations to them compared to an actual macro lens, it's a good way to get your foot in the door of macro photography without spending a ton of money. This last one is not the most exciting item, but trust me when I say that it's worth every penny, and that is a C-stand. This is what I use to get top-down shots, and it's probably the best way to get these kind of shots, unless you're gonna mount something permanently into your ceiling, which I'm sure that most people watching this video aren't ready to do. You obviously aren't limited to shooting top-down shots. These things are super flexible, and they have many uses in filmmaking and in photography. If you don't have one, you should definitely add one to your kit. Okay, so when you buy a lot of gear, inevitably you're gonna buy a couple items that you just don't end up using or you're gonna buy a couple items that you just don't like. For me, there were two items this year that fell into this category. The first being a teleprompter. I can't physically show you the teleprompter as I returned it pretty shortly after I bought it. I think a teleprompter can work for some people, but for me personally, I hated it. It felt super unnatural to be reading something well on camera. Although I do script my videos, I don't actually physically read something as I'm shooting the video, which gives me a little more flexibility to kind of add my own touches to it as I see fit. Like I said, this is just a personal preference for me. I don't like reading something as I'm shooting the video, but I know it works for some people. So if you wanna try it out, try it out and then return it like I did if you don't like it. The next item that I wanna talk about, and it pains me to say it, is the gimbal. This summer, I bought the DJI RS3 Mini Gimbal. Despite seeing several videos of people saying exactly what I'm saying now, that they regret buying a gimbal. Well, I bought it anyway, and it turns out I don't need a gimbal. I think it's a super cool and a super useful piece of gear, but it's just not something that I personally need for the type of work that I do. I think it's one of those pieces of gear that you know if you need it. If you're buying it just because it just came out and it looks cool, you're probably not gonna use it. For me, it's just too much of a hassle to set it up and to balance it that I end up just not using it at all, and I'm probably gonna end up selling it. This experience kind of reinforces what you hear a lot when it comes to gear. 
you shouldn't just buy gear because it just came out or because it's cool. You should buy it for a purpose. There are obviously certain instances where buying a new piece of gear could make a big difference in the videos that you're making, but it's also important to be intentional with the gear that you're spending your money on. Some of the least sexy or cool pieces of gear are the things that are really gonna make a difference to your production quality, like a new light or a new microphone or a C-stand. Save your money and buy yourself a good light, a good microphone, one or two good lenses, a good tripod, a camera backpack, things that you actually need to make the videos that you're making. It seems like this is just one of those things that every photographer and filmmaker has to learn on their own the hard way, despite there being tons of videos out there saying the same thing. I'm curious though, let me know in the comments what are some of your best and worst camera gear purchases of 2023.